Good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, here on the Appalachian Trail, and I'm getting ready to hike up toward the Ricefield Shelter. You take a look at the tree there, you can see that it says uh, the National Forest Boundary tree on that. Um, there's also a sign here that says, uh, talks about the Pine Swamp Shelter on the AT uh, being temporarily closed. Actually it was closed I think uh, like last year, maybe a year before last, due to a bunch of uh, oak trees coming down around the shelter um, uh, from uh, gypsy moss. I mean there was a gypsy moth infection there uh, that was unbelievable. Uh, they they didn't spray in that area because um, it's a uh, what's called a uh, wilderness area. There's uh, several of them uh, within the uh, George Washington and Jefferson National Forest. Probably quite a few. Uh, pine, the Pine Swamp uh, 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 Branch Shelter sits within a wilderness area. It's called the uh, Peters Mountain Wilderness Area, and it's a huge section of land. Uh, the AT runs through it uh, for probably about four, four miles or so. Uh, this is the steps here that you see headed up toward the uh, Pine Swamp Shelter. Right now I'm on Pocahontas Road. You can see Pocahontas Road there. Uh, my white truck, you can see that parked out there. Uh, this is a uh, cattle guard uh, that goes across this uh, uh, little area right here. Um, there's a fence here right on the other side of this uh, fence is private land. Uh, that little area you see right up there where that mud puddle is, it's got a culvert uh, running under the, the road. And that washed out completely uh, here a few years ago, and they had to replace the uh, culvert and refill the land. You couldn't even uh, walk across there. I think they had a board on there we could walk across. Uh, Clendenin Road is uh, out there less than a quarter of a mile. Um, you can see a truck. Uh, I hear a truck over there. Uh, pan over that way, you can see a big truck coming up through there. Uh, on Clendenin Road, and uh, the AT walks right across Clendenin Road, right up there at the end of Pocahontas Road. And the AT walks right along Pocahontas Road uh, here up until you get to this uh, cattle guard, and uh, where it starts going up the uh, to the uh, rice field shelter. I'm going to. Um, I keep this video going here for a little bit and I'm going to head on up toward the shelter and I'm going to let the video run for about um, 15 minutes or so and I'm going to uh, talk kind of as I go along. You can see uh, my shadow here real good there on the AT. The sun's directly in back of me so I'm going to walk on up through here. This part of the trail, of the Appalachian Trail, is part of the trail relocation that was done a few years ago. There was a five mile trail uh, relocation uh, on the AT done in this area to get the AT or the Appalachian Trail off of the Salinese proper, property land and this is part of that trail relocation from this point here on Polkunas Road up to the rice field shelter it is two miles so these steps that you see put in these log steps on the AT that you see here they're only a couple of years old 
uh, as they age, uh, they will eventually need to be replaced. But I would say probably they will be good in the ground like this for um, maybe 10 or 15 years. And uh, eventually a trail uh, crew or a trail club will come in here and uh, do some work on this section again. But like I say, this section was recently completed as part of that AT relocation and it took them uh, three or four years to complete that five mile trail relocation. Uh, you notice how the trail comes down off of this hill here kind of flattens out and then it starts going that, down that hill. What happens is uh, the trail crew they get in here and they dig out um, the trail. They dig out what they call side hill to make the trail flat. Uh, otherwise, as you walk along the trail here, you'd be walking along the side of a hill and it wouldn't be flat, a flat surface for you to walk on. It would be like it was going downhill. So, when they do relocation on these trails and work on these trails, it takes a, a lot of work to dig down uh, the uh, side hill. I'm going to show, put my stick out there and I'll show you. They uh, see where it comes down here and then it gets flat here. They actually dug that down and dug that out right in here so you'll have a flat surface to walk on as you walk along the trail. Here's a, a blaze. You can see on that eight, on that tree, blazes are supposed to be uh, one by six. That one looks like it's a couple inches by six. Uh, when they put the blazes down, they use like a little stencil. That's like one by six, and they just put it on the side of the tree and and paint down through there. It should be like a one by six uh, when they finish. Maybe a two by six. I'm not really sure, but uh, it's long and narrow. And the eight on the Appalachian Trail. The blazes are um, white. Now you can see here, there's been a lot of work done here, putting in these rock steps. Uh, some of these rocks weigh upward to three and 400 pounds. And I know some rocks that they use and they relocate on the trail, uh, actually, some of them get up to be a thousand pounds or more. They use uh, the come alongs to pull those rocks and wood poles use as leverage. And they actually work them into position on the trail and dig them down so they'll be good and solid. And they make rock steps. The rock steps are a lot more durable than the uh, steps that's made out of the pieces of wood. Uh, the wood will rot out after oh, 10 years or 15 years or something like that. The rock steps will stay there pretty much forever. Uh, they may work loose or as the ground freezes and thaws, 
they might tilt a little bit, but them rocks are not going any place other than getting a little loose and tilting a little bit. Now, this section here, all I had to do was dig out the side hill, but as you can see, they dug out quite a bit of side hill. That side hill there looks like it's about uh, three foot higher than the trail. So there was some serious digging that went on right in here to get this flat trail going up through here. What happens is the uh, trail clubs will come out and do a day or two of work uh, every month or so and they'll dig maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 feet of trail and then they have the uh, trail crews, uh, the Appalachian Trail. They have uh, voluntary crews uh, and one of the crews that they work in this area is called Connor Rock and they work out of uh, a, an office down near on Route 81 down near Marion, Virginia which is about uh, I don't know 60, 70, 80 miles uh, south of here on Interstate 81 and uh, they have a uh, Forest Service office down there that uh, and they have some shelters for the Conorock crew to to uh, sleep in and they also have a kitchen area where they can cook their meals and the crews come in down there they're voluntary crews and if you ever want to volunteer for one of those things you can do that um, the uh, just get a hold of the Appalachian Trail folks you can get a hold of them on the internet or look up on the internet and get your phone number and call them and talk to them they have uh, voluntary crews that'll work one week and then the next week They'll have another voluntary crew, and they work uh, from sometime in the spring, maybe April 1st, up until uh, September or October. They work for about five, six months out of the year. The trail crew chief and the assistant tra trail uh, crew chief are paid by the Appalachian Trail. Um, folks here's some more nice rock steps and uh, other than that everybody else on the crew is volunteer and, and they work for a on a weekly basis they have some all women voluntary trail crews and uh then we get trail crews from uh, various places um, and some of them are just uh, people that have been doing this stuff for years they come back year after year and volunteer for a week and I'll tell you something the uh, that trail work is some of the hardest work you ever want to do you got to hike up the side of these mountains to the work location, carrying the tools. And you also carry tents and water up. And you stay camped out near or right at the work site where you're working. And that way you can work till, till fairly late in the day and get up early in the morning and get a start, fresh start, 
without having to to drive in. I'm gonna close this off now. Uh, it's past a little past 15 minutes, so hopefully I can get it to post on internet on uh, on the internet. Please subscribe if you like my videos. Thanks.